on a picture perfect weather day on Tuesday afternoon from West Perry High School. We got baseball action for you today as the West Perry Mustangs make history as the Mustangs host the Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils for the first time as a mid pen colonial division opponent. Let's pray coming into this one, one and one overall. They had a tough loss this past Tuesday on the road at Waynesboro, the first road trip of the year. And for West, West Prairie, they lost four to three against the Waynesboro Indians this past Tuesday. For Greencastle Antrim, they come into this one undefeated, off to a good start at three and zero. Oh. They are two and zero oh in the Mid Pen Colonial Division. They are coming off a sixteen to five win in five innings just yesterday, also against the Waynesboro Indians. For West Prairie Greencastle Antrim, this is the first time ever that both teams were facing each other as Mid Pen Colonial Division rivals. The last time the Mustangs faced the Blue Devils was all the way back in 2016 in the semifinals of the mid Penn Conference Tournament, which was won by Greencastle Rancho and Final Score. That game was 8-2. The Blue Devils would later win the mid Penn Conference Championship. For Greencastle Rancho, they are unbeaten on the road. They only have one road game so far that was back in the first game of the season on March 26th and they were victorious at Camp Hill. Final score of that one was 5-2. to two. West Perry they are unbeaten at home. This is their second only their second home game of the year but this is also the first of four straight home games for the West Perry Mustangs. West Perry their first win of the year was back Back in late March, March 30th, actually, in the Perry County, Sem Perry County Tournament semifinals, they were victorious 10 0 in five innings against the Susquehanna Blackhawks the last time they were at home. West Perry at Waynesboro this past Tuesday. West Perry had a 3 1 lead hanging into the seventh inning, or hanging to about the seventh inning, excuse me. But Waynesboro was able to come back with three runs scored in the bottom of the seventh to beat the Mustangs and hand them their first loss of the year. This also marks that at Waynesboro this past Tuesday, that was their first ever game against a mid pen Colonial Division rival in the same division. For West Perry, once again, this is the first of four straight home games. They have three more home games coming up after this. It comes back on Thursday when the Mustangs host Big Spring. The Bulldogs will be in town. That will be our next broadcast at 4.30. Sa this Saturday at 12 o'clock noon, they'll be hosting Juniana, the Indians in a non-conference matchup. And then next Tuesday, they'll take on the North New York Polar Bears at 4.30 next Tuesday to wrap up the homestand for the Mustangs. Greencastle Rancho 3-0 on the year so far. Three impressive wins so far. They first they had Camp Hill on the road. They beat them five to two. Next they had their home opener against the Big Spring Bulldogs, and the final score of that one was twelve to nothing. And then just yesterday they were on the road at Waynesboro, and they and Greencastle Rancho won sixteen to five, as mentioned earlier. So definitely for Greencastle Rancho, a high-scoring offense to start the year. The umpires for today's game is Dennis Weller behind home plate calling balls and strikes, and Frank Kutry will be calling the bases here. We have the starting arms for both teams. The Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils goes as follows. Number 18, Aiden Gritzinski will start off. He'll be at center field. The catcher, Carter Reed, number five, will bat second. The shortstop, Logan Layton, number 17, batting third. Darren Klein, the first baseman, number 28, spotting fourth. Number 21, Connor Rom. Number three, who is the third baseman, will be spotting six. The pitcher for the Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils is Andrew Kearns, number seven. He'll be batting seventh, and he'll be on the mound for the Blue Devils. Over at right field, Brady Diller, 
number four will be batting eighth. And in nine hole spot is Austin Wyan, the second baseman, number 10. The head coach for Green Castle Metro is Eric Shainer. Shainer. This is his 10th year as the head coach for the Green Castle Metro Blue Devils. West Prairie Mustangs, almost a similar lineup that we saw, and here they come. West Prairie Mustangs taking the field for only the second time this season here at home. Laying off for West Prairie in the bottom of the first will be Trenton Herrera. He is over at shortstop. Batting second, the third baseman, Nelson Seabold. Batting third will be the center fielder, Tanner Baker, number 11. The pitcher for the Mustangs today is Aiden Russell, number 17. He'll be batting fourth. Number 13, Bryce Smith will be over at right field. He'll be batting fifth at the cleanup spot. The catcher, Josiah Twig, number five, will be batting six. Grayson Shambo, who we saw pitching last time on his 17th birthday, will be batting seventh. Number eight, he'll be at first base. The number eight hitter, Noah Kittner, will be over at left field. Number 15 will be batting eighth. And at the nine hole spot is number three, Johnny Clegg, who will be at second base today. We are about to get started here at West Prairie High School, West Prairie Baseball Varsity Field. Aiden Russell, the pitcher for today for the Mustangs. He had a big win against Susquehanna back in the Perry County semifinals. And history and a making for you today. We, we are filled for everyone at home to join us here on the West Prey Out Black Apartments YouTube page. My name is Alex Wall, bringing you the live commentary for this very exciting historic day for the West Prairie Mustangs, their first home game as Mid Penn Colonial Division. On their second ever game in the Mid Penn Colonial Division for the Mustangs, they lost last, last Tuesday over a week ago against Waynesboro. And it's a beautiful day here at West Prairie Varsity Baseball Field. 72 degrees, a couple clouds in the sky, a little over a week ago. The weather team was predicting a couple stray showers today, but luckily Mother Nature loves West Prairie Baseball. And she has decided to hold off the rain until overnight later tonight. So shouldn't see any problems as far as the weather. A little bit windy here, but that's normal here at West Prairie High School in early April. And we are about to get started here. West Perry versus Green Castle Antrim. First ever meeting as Mid Penn Colonial Division rivals. The first time, the last time they met the Blue Devils was in the Mid Penn Conference Tournament in 2016 in the semifinals, which was won by Green Castle. And here we go, the blade off batter for Green Castle Antrim is Aiden Gritsinski, the center fielder. And here's the first pitch from Aiden Russell. It's swung on and it's fouled away. And that is how the game gets started. Strike one. Free Castle Antrim unbeaten so far. 3-0 on the year. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Russell. And it almost gets away. And now the umpire... Home plate umpire is saying it hit Grzynski, so Grzynski is on after being hit by that pitch. And that is how the game gets started. There's a number two hitter for Greencastle Antrim, Carter Reed, the catcher. And he's got a runner on first with nobody out. And now we're actually going to have a conference call here for, for the umpires. It's probably going to be talking, we're probably going to be talking about if that last pitch hit Gwinsiski or not. Once again, the hope the umpires for today's game, Dennis Weller is behind home plate and Frank Kutry is calling the bases. Not entirely sure what that conference call was for, but still the results the same. Gritsiski over at first base, nobody out to start the game. And uh, here's the catcher, Carter Reed. Uh, 
first pitch to Reed is inside for a ball. Why and all is the count. For those who are just joining us, we are just getting started here. Top, top of the first inning. Nice big ground and throw over here to first base. Big Grayson Shambo trying to pick up with Siski. Siski able to slide back in at top. A nice crowd here for the West Prairie Mustangs. A few Green Council Antrim fans making a long trip as well. And next pitch is down in the dirt. That's a ball. Two and out of the count to Carter Reed. This is a, a very busy week coming up here for West Prairie Athletics. We got baseball here, also over at the football stadium. We got a track and field meet going on as the boys and girls track and field teams are taking on the Trinity Shamrocks. And we got we we have off tomorrow, but then West Prairie baseball on Thursday, softball on Friday, and then baseball again on Saturday. So three straight games after tomorrow. Comes the 2 0 pitch, and that's inside as well. Three, and, three balls and no strikes to Carter Reed. Early trouble here for Aiden Russell early on. Three and 0 pitch, ball four, a four pitch walk to Carter Reed. And very quickly, there are runners at first and second now with nobody out to start the ball game. Fans continuing to pile up here, all socially distanced, of course. Just a beautiful day for baseball. Step back by Aaron Russell, trying to get Grzyski back there a second. The hitter right now for Green Castle Antrim is Logan Layton, the shortstop, number 17. He's got runners on first and second with nobody out. Here's the first pitch. And that is a called strike. Only oh, one to count to Logan Layton. West Prairie unbeaten at home, but Greencastle Antrim unbeaten overall. 3 0. West Prairie 1 and 1 after losing to Waynesboro this past Tuesday. And once again, another step off here. The head coach for West Prairie is Jeff Sano. This is his 21st season as the head coach for West Prairie Mustangs. An amazing career for Jeff Sound, and it doesn't look like he's going anywhere anytime soon. That pitch was down in the dirt for a ball. Count is now if at one ball, one strike. go with the one and one pitch. Swing and it's grounded. And that's going to get out to the outfield. That's going to score a run. Brzezinski is coming around. Now we've got some trouble over here. And now the second run is going to come across the score. And just like that, it's an RBI, two RBI double for Logan Layton. And Greencastle is on the board first. It's very quickly two to nothing. That's the first hit of the game for Greencastle Antrim. And it's a two run double for Logan Layton. And very quickly, Jeff Stano is gonna come on, come out to the, to the mound here, talk to his entire team about what has happened so far. First was a hit by pitch for, to Krasinski, and Carl Reed reached first on a four pitch walk, and Logan Layton uh, one and one count strikes with a two run double. So early trouble here for the Mustangs. That's the, those are the first two runs let go by West Prairie at home this season. And coming up now is Darren Klein. Step back here, trying to keep Logan Layton. Oh, there in second. Hey, 
And that bitch almost gets Klein there in the foot. Able to dodge that one. And Jamal 1 0. Greencastle Antrim rolling early here. 2 0 the score. Still nobody out. And that pitch right on the corner off the strike zone is called for a strike. Count now Eve at one ball, one strike. Darren Klein, the first baseman for the Blue Devils. Boy, one pitch from Russell is in there for a strike. One ball and two strikes. First time in this inning that A. Russell has gone ahead in the count. With two strikes. And Russell looking for a big first out. Here comes the one two pitch, but no, a quick step back here and nobody covered for Logan Layton. Here's the next pitch, it's one nine, it's gonna get hit well, and that's gonna go down, and no, nobody's gonna score on that one. That would have easily been another run for Greencastle Antrim, but instead, they got runners at first and third now with nobody out. It's a single for, Kate, for Darren Clark. Coming up next here is Caden Smith, the left fielder for Greencastle. Runners on first and third, but nobody out. First pitch to Smith is a ball on another count. A hit by pitch, a four pitch walk, a double, and a single. That's the line score so far for the Blue Devils. Here's a pitch high in the air. It's going to be caught out there. And here's a long throw to home plate, but it's not going to be nearly in time. So it's a sacrifice fly for Caden Smith. And that is the first out of the inning. First out after five at-bats. My goodness. So here's Connor Rom now for Greencastle Antrim. And a quick throw over here, trying to keep Darren Klein put there at first base. Runner on first with one out now. And next pitch is First pitch to Connor Rom is in the dirt for a ball, 1 0. Not the start by West Prairie baseball or West Prairie fans here, we're not looking for. 3 to nothing is the score for Greencastle Rancho. Now we're only at the first inning, ladies and gentlemen. 1 0 pitch, check swing, but it's called for a strike anyway. Connor Rom facing a 1 and 1 count, number 3 for the Blue Devils, the third baseman for the Blue Devils. And once again, never throw over. Almost got away there from Grayson Shampo there first. One one pitch coming from Aiden Russell. And they there for a strike. One ball and two strikes to count now to Connor Rom. No strikeouts yet for Aiden Russell. Aiden Russell had nine strikeouts against Susquehanna in the first game of the year here at home. Next page, check swing as, and oh, it looked like he fouled off, but it's, it's a check swing and he did not go around. So that's gonna be rolled a ball. The count is now two balls and two strikes. Well, actually, that right now they're saying. It, it looked like Darren Klein was at second. He was, but now they're saying go back. 
Maybe that maybe that was a foul ball. I mean, it looked like it from up here. So the count might still be one ball and two strikes. On the scoreboard, it says one ball and two strikes. So maybe it was fouled off. I don't know what the check down was for. Yep, the home, home plate umpire Dennis Barr just confirmed the count is one ball and two strikes. Another throw over here. And, and Russell trying to catch Darren Kahn. Napping over there at first base. But so far it hasn't worked out well for him. And Russell with numerous throw overs already to first and second base so far in the first inning. There's a one and two pitch. And just outside. Now the count is even at two balls and two strikes. And that ball hits Connor Rom, so Connor Rom advances to first on a hit by pitch. Darren Klein advances over to second. That's the second hit by pitch that Aiden Russell has thrown in this inning. The first since the leadoff hitter, Aaron Gwinsinski, who scored later. So here's the seventh batter of the inning for Green Cousin Rantrum as the pitcher, Andrew Kearns. He's got to be feeling pretty happy right now after the Blue Devils gave him a three to nothing lead. He has a chance to help his own cause here with a runner in scoring position with only one out. And the first pitch to Kearns is in for a strike. One pitch to Kearns and it goes up high and Kearns able to dodge that one. One ball, one strike. That's one thing you definitely need to do not want to do if you're Aiden Russell. You do not want to hit the opposing pitcher. That can only lead to bad things later. There's a one-on-one -on -one pitch outside for a ball. Two balls and one strike. We want to thank everyone home for joining us. We are still in the top of the first inning. Greencastle Antrim piling on early. Three to nothing is the score. Next pitch to Kearns is in there for a strike. We are even now at two balls and two strikes. Rounds on first and second with only one out. The one out was a sacrifice fly by Kane Smith. This is the seventh hitter of the inning. Top of the first for Green Castle Antrim. The start of a very busy week here for West Prairie Athletics. That's right, this is their first of four straight home games. This is their first ever home game as a mid pen Colonial Division opponent. And here is a ground ball to shortstop, and that is the throw of seconds in time, but the throw the first not in time. So it's a fierce choice for Andrew Kearns. And there are now two outs here. That, that was almost the uh, top of the first thing, ending double play. Darren Klein fences to third on that play. So it runs on first and third with two outs. We're gonna have a pinch runner here for Andrew Kearns. Uh, pinch runner is Sean Eppy. And the next hitter, the eighth hitter of the game, of, of the inning, excuse me, for Greencastle Antrim, it's Brady Diller, the right fielder. And there is a first pitch strike to Brady Diller. Two outs, runners on first and third. Top of the first inning, West Perry trying to snap a monster inning. 
for the Blue Devils. A throw over the third. And we've seen this a couple times against Susquehanna in the first game. But uh, West Perry does not do that very often. A very a throw over to third base. You rarely ever see that for the West Perry Mustangs, but all right, they've had to do that in the first inning. It'd be that kind of game here for West Perry. Here's the first pitch. It's down low in our next pitch where Brady Diller is down low in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Comes a one-on-one -on -one pitch from Aiden Russell. Runners go tag him for second. And here's, they see this against Susquehanna, and the runner is out. We have seen that against Susquehanna, and that's the third out of the game. A runner trying to advance to second, when a runner on third is trying to advance a home thrower to second, cut off, and thrown back to home to nail the runner at home. Darren Klein tagged out at the plate, and that is the third out of the inning. That's the end of the first inning. Let Greenhouse or Antrim strikes for three. And West Bray going up to bat for the first time at home as a mid pen colonial division rival. At the bottom, we are heading to the bottom first. You're watching West Bray baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Bray Athletics Department's YouTube page. We'll be right back. We are back here for the bottom of the first thing. We want to take you back to what just happened here in the top of the first. Greencastle Antrim almost had a big inning. They scored three runs in the top of the first. But that last play for West Prairie Mustangs defense was something that we see pretty often here. We've been watching West Prairie practice these last few weeks, and they always practice that, that play where you got runners on the corners, runner fastest. Is, Tries to steal second, he doesn't do it intentionally, so the runner at third can go steal home. But West Prairie is very familiar with that. That is something that you are not going to get away with against the West Prairie defense. So, throw to second from Josiah Twig is cut off. And the shortstop was the cutoff man, Trent Herrera. And he threw it back to Twig to nail the runner at home to end the inning. And speaking of Trent Herrera, here, here he is to lead off for the Mustangs. And on the first pitch, he gets hit by it. And the pitcher for Greencastle Retro is Andrew Kearns. And very quickly, Trent Herrera is on first. And Nelson Seabone, the third baseman for West Perry today, is batting second. Seaboard showing signs of punt, and that ball got away by a nice cutoff there by the second baseman. The baseman is number 10, Austin Lyon. And a nice job to cut that one off. Hoping to get that, not to get that ball in the outfield. So it's a ball to Nelson Seaboard. Our 
our throw over here to first. Herrera able to get back in and tie. pitch from Kearns and now Herrera is in trouble here and a good throw over to second but Herrera able to get back in in time. I believe that pitch was the ball so two no the count now. Let's get started start here following the first. Herrera at first with nobody out. Once again, Sipo showing signs of button. And throw over to second. And Herrera this time is called safe. Stolen base here for Trent Herrera. And now they're saying Herrera got, was called out at second. So caught stealing was Trent Herrera. Basis umpire is Frank Kutry, the basis umpire for today. Caught Herrera out and head coach Jeff Stanley is on his way to talk to Frank Kutry to talk about that play. Herrera couldn't believe it. There is one out here. The count is three balls and no strikes to Nelson Seabold. Trying to bunt Herrera over to second. And a conversation here. At Westbury head coach Jeff Sam. Talking about that play. I think there was a reason why Trent Herrera was very slow to get up from second. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it, but he was caught out. It was a delayed throw by Carter Reed, the catcher for Greencastle Antrim. But the call stands, so Trent Herrera is called, is, is out, caught steal in second. So now one, one away here, it's a three and out count to Nelson Seabold. No pages. Oh, I, I guess there was a strike somewhere. I just missed it. So, I believe that was the first strike. So three and one is the count. And there is ball four. So Nelson Seabold is on with a walk. Nelson Seabolt at first, and coming up is number 11, the center fielder, Tanner Baker. He's got a runner on first with one out. He's ready trying to cut this three to nothing deficit just in the bottom of the first. First pitch to Baker is up high for a ball, it's one and out. No pitch in there for a strike to Tanner Baker. Count now if at one ball and one strike. Next pitch is swung on, it's got to get past the pitcher, and that's got to get down. And Apparently it was stopped there by the pitcher Kearns to throw over to third, so there are two away now. Not a chance that they will play, so Nelson Siebel advances to second. And here's the 
West Perry pitcher Aiden Russell. He's got a runner in scoring position now with two outs. So runner in second here, and here's a swing and a miss from Aiden Russell. That's the first strike. And Russell trying to shake off the top of the first inning. That's one thing about Ben Russell is that he always starts the game off rough, but once he finds his groove, he finds it. A great example of that was against Susquenita. And here's a pitch up high. One and one to count. In that game against Susquenita, Ben Russell went two for three, scored twice, and hit, got two RBIs in the win against Susquenita. So definitely a big threat at the plate, but right here is a swing strike. Strike two to Aiden Russell, counting out one ball and two strikes. Looks like Aiden Russell swung on, he's got to get hit to second. Throw over to first, and that is the end of the first inning. Four to three to put out. West Prairie strands a runner at first. No hits, one walk by Nelson Seabold. And we are heading into the second inning with Greencastle Antrim up three to nothing. You are watching West Prairie baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Parks YouTube page. We'll be right back. We are about to get started here, the second inning. Greencastle Antrim up three to nothing. We want to thank everyone at home for joining us here on the West Prairie Athletic Park's YouTube page. A nice crowd here for West Prairie fans. A few, a couple of Greencastle Antrim fans making the long trip to support their Blue Devils. And here we go, bottom the top of the second inning. And here is Brady Diller. Brady Diller swings on first pitch strike. And that is up high, but it's called for a strike by the home plate umpire Dennis Glutter. And the count very quickly is no balls and two strikes to Brady Diller, the right fielder for Greencastle Antrim. 0 2 pitch once again up high. This time it's laid off by Brady Diller. And the count is now even at one ball and two strikes. Not a bad idea for Aiden Russell to throw that same pitch up high, but I do not want to. 
brought out for a third straight time. There might be right for that check swing, but it's a call third strike. It's a first strikeout for Aiden Russell in this game. And there is one out. Up next is number nine hole hitter for the Blue Devils, Austin Wyan, the second baseman. Nobody on with one out. This could be the star stuffing for Aiden Russell. Strikeout to start the top of the second. And next pitch is in there for a strike. All in one. One pitch to Wyand. It's down in the dirt. One ball, one strike. In the game against Susquehanna a little over a week ago in the Perry County semifinals, we did see that Aaron Russell was off to a flying start. Not so much here. He had two strikeouts in the first, but right now he's got one strikeout here. And here's a swing and grounded here to shortstop. A long throw and in time. A nice play there from Trenton Herrera to Grayson Shampaugh. And very quickly, there are two away now. We are back to the top of the lineup. And here is Aiden Gritzinski, the center fielder. He was hit by a pitch his first time in the first inning and later came around to score to give Greencastle Antrim the lead. He scored on a two-run double from Logan Lake. And here is the first pitch swing and Gritzinski misses. See Aaron Russell has found his groove now. And here's the next pitch down in the dirt for a ball. One ball and one strike. Don't want to jinx anything here for Aaron Russell, but very quickly, two outs in the second inning. Looking for a one, two, three inning after a tough first. And a swing and a miss, and that is strike two. One ball and two strikes here to Aiden Prince. Krinsinski. Aiden versus Aiden. Krinsinski versus Russell. Here's the next pitch, a swing and a miss. And that is strike three. And a quick one, two, three inning for Aiden Russell. Two strikeouts in the second. One, two, three inning, go down the Blue Devils. West Prey will be back to batting the ball in a second. They are still down, three to nothing. You are watching West Prey. Baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Prey Athletic Forum's YouTube page. We are back here for the ball in the second inning. Greencastle Antrim after a 1-2-3 inning. Still up 3-0 here in the ball in the second. West Prairie looking for their first hit of the game. And leading off is the cleanup hitter, Bryce Smith, the right fielder for the Mustangs. As Smith looks at a first pitch strike, it's 1-0, or 0-1 to count to Bryce Smith. And 
Russell, the pitcher for West Perry. Uh, after a tough first inning, came right back in the second with a 1-2-3 inning with two strikeouts and a ground ball. Next pitch to Smith. And a ball. One and one to count. Outside for a ball, two balls and one strike. For Green Castle Rancho, this is nothing new to them. They are a high scoring offense throughout the season. Their lowest scoring game was the first one on the road at Camp Hill. Final score was five to two. But in the next two games, they remain undefeated, scoring 12 runs against Big Spring and a 12 to nothing victory. And then just yesterday on the road at Waynesboro, they dominated them Indians. Final score of that one was 16 to 5. That pitch is in our first strike. Three balls and two strikes to Bryce Smith to open up the bottom of the second. Pitcher for Green Castle Antrim is Andrew Kearns. And there is a call third strike. That's the first strikeout for Andrew Kearns. And there's one away to start the second inning. Next batter is the catcher, Josiah Twig, the six, number six hitter for the Mustangs. He has nobody on with one out. First pitch to Twig. He's in the dirt. Ball one no. For those who are just joining us, we are in the bottom of the second inning. Green Castle Antrim up three to nothing. Scoring three runs in the first inning. Next pitch to Twig. Inside for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. West Price still looking for the first hit of the game. Nelson Seabold reached first on a four, on a on a base on balls. And the second uh, bat for the Mustangs in the first inning, but nothing else following that. Three and no, the count now to Josiah Twig. So we see another walk here for the Mustangs. Three and no, the count. If you're Josiah Twig, you might want to take another one. This is a free pitch, and that is a strike. Three balls and one strike to the count. What do you do here if you're Josiah Twig? Do you take another pitch looking for ball four or you decide to take a hack out because this is another free pitch coming and there is the another take and it's another strike so from three and now it's now four at three balls and two strikes to Josiah Twig. Next pitch check swing and it's gonna get out of play foul still three balls and two strikes. So I tried to me to check that. He's probably thankful he did. I could have been called third strike. Once again, the full count pitch from Andrew Kearns. And swung on a line drive, and that's a base hit for Josiah Twig. Goes out to the center field, throw comes in, and Josiah Twig gets the first hit of the game for the Mustang. Cut up next is Grayson Shambaugh, the number seven hitter for the Mustangs. The last time we saw him was in the Perry County semifinal against Susquehanna. That was his 17th birthday, and he had a good day on the plate against the Blackhawks. But right here, he looks at first pitch strike. All in one to count. Grayson Shambaugh had a two-run double against Susquehanna. He was one for one with a walk and a hit by pitch, the two RBIs, and that pitch is ruled off. A timeout called here by the home plate umpire, Dennis Weller. So, oh, one still the count to Grayson Shamble. Run on Josiah Twig on first, one out. Next pitch up high. It's a ball. One ball and one strike to Shambo. Right. 
One one pitch coming from Andrew Kearns to Grayson Shampoo is swung on and it's gonna stay in play over to shortstop. Roll over to second and it got away. Got out towards the center field and that's gonna be rolled an E6. And there are runners at first and second now with one out. Yep, that is going to be ruled an error in E6. Going error on the shortstop, Logan Layton. And coming up next is the eight hitter, Noah Kittner, the left fielder for the Mustangs. He's got runs on first and second with one out. Kittner looks at first pitch strike. All in one to count. Probably looking to do something here in a second. Looking to cut this three to nothing deficit. Kittner swings at the next pitch and misses. Two strikes is the count. Runners are first and second up after that error on the shortstop. Oh, and two pitch. Down low. Just missing the strike zone. Not a bad pitch there by. Andrew Kearns uh, misses one ball and two strikes to count. That was a very good pitch by Andrew Kearns. That could have been caught even Ray, honestly. One two pitch coming. Swing and a miss. And there are two away now. That's a strike, swing strikeout to Noah Kidner. The runs will stay put at first and second. And here comes the bottom of the lineup, the nine hole hitter. Johnny Clegg, the second baseman for the Mustangs. He was used as a flex player against Susquehanna, getting his first start at home on the year. Johnny Clegg looks at first pitch strike. Runners on first and second with two outs now. Green Castle Andrew pitcher Andrew Kearns, but two strikeouts in this inning. Probably looking to cash in here. Next pitch to Clegg. It's outside for a ball. One ball, one strike. Next pitch is swung on and it's fouled away. One ball and two strikes to count. Clegg is outside for a ball. Two balls and two strikes to count. Now to Johnny Clegg. Two on, two outs, two to count here in inning number two. Two's all around here. And let's pray strike to cut this three and up and deficit. Here's a 2 2 pitch outside for a ball. Three balls and two strikes. Count pitch, swung on and fouled away. Count is still four, three balls and two strikes. Once again, full count pitch from Kearns. Outside, ball four. And now the bases are loaded with two outs. A really good opportunity here. And we are back to the top of the lineup here. Here's Trenton Herrera. No official at bat as of yet. He was hit by a pitch to lead off the bottom of the first inning. 
So now he's got the bases loaded with two outs. Big at bat here for Herrera. Next pitch, got outside the catcher's glove. It's called for a ball, but no runners advancing. A big break there for the Blue Devils. Carl Reed able to get that ball back right away. One and all the count now. Bases loaded. Two outs for Trenton Herrera. Next pitch in the dirt. A nice scoop there by Carter Reed. And counts now two balls and no strikes. Two and all pitch to Herrera. In there for a called strike. Two balls and one strike. The outfielders way back, almost close to the fence. So expecting a long ball here. And that pitch is up high. The count is now three balls and one strike. And right away, here comes the Greencastle, Greencastle Antrim head coach, Eric Shaner. And this is a big pitch coming up. 3-1 to count. Bases are loaded. So the next pitch could be ball four. And that, could, that would score a run for the Mustangs. Okay, let's put on the board. So they got a big pitch coming up here. If you're Trenton Herrera, what would you do? You got a free pitch coming up. So you can take this and hope for ball four, which will be scored, which will score a run for the Mustangs. So big pitch coming up here. Three one the count to Trent Herrera. Is this gonna be a ball four? Will Westbury go on the board on this pitch? Here's the pitch. Down low in the dirt. Ball four. And that is gonna score a run. Josiah Twig coming around to score. And the Mustangs are on the board. It's now three to one. And the bases are still loaded with two outs. Next pitch, oh, once again, down low in the dirt. This is Nelson Sipo. He reached first on the on a walk in the first inning. He was the first base runner of the game for West Perry. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Kearns. Up high, but it's called for a strike. 1-1 the count. Bases are loaded. West Perry on the board. 3-1 is the score. One-on-one one pitch, up high. Two balls at one strikes to Nelson Seabold and West Perry, third baseman. Next pitch is in there for a strike. Two balls and two strikes to count to Nelson Seabold. West Perry in danger here. Don't want to strand the base is loaded down by two runs. A base hit could tie this game up. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and it's got to get fouled away. Two balls and two strikes. Still the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases are loaded for Nelson Seaball. Next pitch. Outside for a ball, it's full count. Three balls and two strikes. Another big pitch here coming from Andrew Kearns, the Greencastle Antrim pitcher. Here's the full count pitch. Riders are advancing and now this ball four. Another run is gonna come in the score on the walk. And West Perry cuts the deficit down to one run. It's now three ball. Three to two for the Blue Devils. Hey. And here is Tanner Baker. He grounded out to the pitcher last time up. And he looks at a first pitch strike. Bases are still loaded. Back to back walks for a run on bases loaded. The score is now three to two for the Blue Devils. Tanner Baker looking at 0-1 count. Here's the next pitch. Swing and a miss. And the count is now 0-2 to the West Perry center fielder. The 
Next pitch. In there for a call third strike. And that is the third out. That's the end of the second inning. West Prairie strands the bases loaded, but they score two on back-to-back -back bases loaded walks. The score after two innings, Greencastle Antrim three, West Perry two. You're watching West Perry baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Perry Leg Bars YouTube page. We'll be right back. We are back here for the third inning. Greencastle Antrim scored three runs in the first inning for West Prey. Cutting that lead down to one. They just scored two runs in the bottom of the second inning. Greencastle Antrim had one, two, three inning in the second inning by Aiden Russell. And here's the second, here's the first hitter for Greencastle Antrim in the third. Carter Reed, the first the catcher for Greencastle Antrim. And he looks a high pitch for a ball. 1 0 from Aiden Russell. Next pitch from Russell is inside for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. Two and all the count to Carter Reed. Here's the next pitch from Aiden Russell. Swung on, and it's gonna get grounded to second. Throw is in time to first, so a 2 0 count. A nice big pitch there. Carter Reed swing on 2 0. He grounds out to second, and that's the first out of the third inning. Next is number three here for Greencastle Antrim. Logan Layton, this is a big at bat here. He had the two run double in the first inning to give Greencastle Antrim a two nothing lead. And the first pitch he sees is up high for a ball, one and up. The count to the Greencastle Antrim shortstop. One and all pitch to Layton. Down low this time, it's 2-0 to count. So Logan Lane be swinging, the, swinging here on 2-0 count like Carter Reed did just a few, just a moment ago. And see, here's the two, here comes the 2-0 pitch from Aiden Russell. Swing is out of play. Big rip there by Logan Layton, but he was Able to tip that off and goes out of play. The count is two balls and one strike. There it is, two and one. The count to Aiden from Aiden Russell, and that's a ball. Three balls and one strike. So far, not a very high, a high hitting. High offensive game, three to the score, but Green Castle Rancho only has two hits, both of them in the first. West Prairie only with one. And next pitch is swung on and foul back. 
Of course, the backstop here at West Prairie Varsity Field. The count is now full at three balls and two strikes. Here comes a full count pitch from Aiden Russell. A swing and a miss. Logan Lane goes down swinging. And there are two outs now. That's the third strikeout of the game for Aiden Russell. And very quickly, there are two away in the third inning. And next up is the third baseman, or first baseman, Darren Klein. He had a single that could result in an RBI, but the runner from second was Logan Lane. He did not come around third to score. So Darren Klein, one for one so far with a single. Here's the first pitch to Klein. In there for a strike. Only one to count. I think it's safe to say that Aiden Russell has found his groove. He had a rough first thing, giving up three runs. Three earned runs for the Mustangs. And that ball gets behind Klein there. Almost dangerous, but good job by Darren Klein to avoid that one. The count is now even one ball and one strike. And Russell. We have a wild one count to Darren Klein. Here's the next pitch, down low in the dirt. Two balls and one strike. In the Perry County Tournament semifinals against Susquehanna, Ant Russell has thrown a, a few wild pitches so far here in the top of the third. He has thrown zero wild pitches. And here is the next pitch. It's a ball, three balls and one strike to count to the Blue Devil first baseman. Darren Klein was hit a single on a one and two count in the first inning. Here's a three and one pitch, and that nails Klein. Klein gets down, but he's able to get right back up. That, that pitch clearly not intentional by Ian Russell, but it's a hit by pitch. And there's a two out base runner for Greencastle Rancho. Up next is the left fielder, Caden Smith. He had, a, he had a sacrifice fly, so no official at bat. That's a, yeah, he had a sacrifice fly that got Logan Lane to score from third to make a three to nothing game. And he's got a runner on first with two outs here in the top of the third inning. First pitch is in the dirt. A nice scoop there by Josiah Twig. Josiah Twig has done fantastic so far in this game. He made a couple big errors in the game against Susquehanna, but so far he's been able to scoop up the ball very nicely. Able to hang on to the ball and no wild pitches have to, no no pitches have gone away from him. And just like that, like that ball got away from him, but in but right there, Josiah Twig able to scoop it back up. And the count is two balls and no strikes to Caden Smith, the Greencastle Antrim left fielder. Two and no pitch, a pie for a ball. Three balls and no strikes. Before that last nice that bad, before hitting down Klein, Aiden Russell has Retired five straight. Two ground balls and three strikeouts. The next pitch is in there for a strike. Three balls and one strike to count. This was the same count to Darren Klein just a moment ago before being hit by a pitch. Let's see if Aaron Russell can get this count full. And there is a called second strike. It's a full count. Three balls and two strikes to Caden Smith. A big pitch here. Darren Cry will be on the run to second on a full count, two strike, two out pitch. 
And here's a swing, a line drive, and that's gonna get down for a base hit. Big throw here for the center fielder to third. And that is gonna be a base hit for Caden Smith on a full count with two outs, a big hit and run. And there are now runners at first and third with two outs. Next batter is Connor Rahm. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning. He was later grounded into a fielder's choice. He was out at second on a fielder's choice by Andrew Kearns. But here are two outs with runners on first and third. First pitch to Rahm is on par for a ball, 1-0. We'll see if Green Castle Antrim would We'll want to do what they try to do in the first inning. They have runners in first and third with two outs. Running from first was still in second. But at the same time, the runner from third was still in home. But a nice cutoff by the shortstop Trent Herrera. Got the runner out at home to end the inning. And that last pitch was a ball, two balls and no strikes. That's pretty keep a close eye on that double play formation here for the Mustangs. And a timeout called. And the home plate umpire, Dennis Weller, saying something to the West Perry bench. West Perry dugout. And I don't know, he was just looking for more balls actually. He's got him, so fish ain't time out. Two, two balls and no strikes to Connor Rahm. Two and oh pitch from Russell. Inside for a ball. Three balls and no strikes to the Blue Devils third baseman. Next pitch, 3 0 pitch in there for a strike, taken there by Connor Rahm. Three balls and one strike. You do not want this ball to get away from Josiah Twig. You do not want to give up a ball four to have a basis loaded situation. Next pitch hits Rahm. And second hit by pitch in this inning thrown by Ann Russell. And bases are now loaded. With two outs, and coming up next is Andrew Kearns. He reached first base on a fielder's choice this last time up. And we're going to have a timeout called here by West Prairie head coach Jeff Sano. We'll be right back after this West Prairie timeout. Basil Slaughter in the top of the third with two outs. West Perry head coach Jeff Sano talking to his entire infield. Bases are loaded with two outs. Green Castle Antrim has a three to two lead. Can they increase their lead with a big hit right here? And coming up next is the Green Castle Antrim pitcher, Andrew Kearns. Fielder's choice his first time up in the first inning. And the first pitch he sees here in the third inning is a ball. Want to know the count? One-0 pitch to Kearns is swung on. That's going to get out of play 
Count is now if at one ball and one strike. Grayson Shambo, the first baseman for West Perry. Thought he might have had an opportunity to grab that, but that's way out of play, not a chance for Shambo. One ball and one strike to count now. To Andrew Kearns. Here's the next pitch. Down low in the dirt. It's two balls and one strike. It's a 2-1 pitch from Aiden Russell, and it's up high, but it's called a strike. Two balls and two strikes now. A very big pitch coming here for Aiden Russell. A big pitch coming here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Next pitch, swing and a miss by all the home point umpire, Dennis Wellers, saying that ball was tipped. Not caught by Josiah Twig, so the count is still even at two balls and two strikes. A big break there for the Blue Devils. That was almost foul tip into Josiah Twig's glove behind home plate. Next pitch is one on. It's going to get grounded. Aiden Russell has a throw to Shambo. And that is the end of the third inning. The Blue Devils strand the bases loaded, and they still have a 3-2 lead. We are hanging to the bottom of the third. West Prairie coming up the bat down by one run. You are watching West Prairie Boys Baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Park's YouTube page. We'll be right back for the bottom of the third inning. We are back here for the bottom of the third inning. West Prairie defense coming up huge in the top of the third. Stranding the bases loaded. Maintaining the Greencastle Antrim lead 3-2. to two. West Prairie scored two runs on back-to-back -back bases loaded walks in the second. And we've got four, five, and six hitters coming up for the Mustangs. And here's the pitcher, Aiden Russell. The fourth hitter for West Prairie to lead off at the bottom of the third. First pitch, he's as high up. And the second baseman is calling for it, and he's got it. Nice play there for second baseman Austin Lyon. And they're very quickly one out here. One pitch, one out for the Greencastle Entrum pitcher Andrew Kearns. Come up next is Bryce Smith, the right fielder for the Mustangs. 
and he swings at the first pitch, and this time he misses. One, oh, it won the count. Brad Smith struck out looking his first time up in the second inning to lead off the second. Next pitch to Smith is swung on and miss. All in two, the count. Oh and two count. Oh and two pitch coming to Bryce Smith inside for a ball. One and two the count now. Nice place pitch there by Andrew Kern. One and two pitch inside once again for a ball. So from zero and two we are back even at two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch in there for a called third strike. That's the second time Bryce Smith has been caught looking down on strikes, and there are two away now in the third inning. Up next is the catcher Josiah Twig. He had the first hit of the game for the Mustangs in the second inning, a one out single, who later came around to score. And the first pitch to Josiah, Josiah Twig is in there for a strike. All the one to count. Next all one pitch, up high for a ball. One and one to count to the West Perry catcher. Close game here, Greencastle Antrim up three to two. And here's a line drive, and that is gonna get down for a base hit. Josiah Twig with his second hit of the game. It's a single, and that's a two out single for the West Prairie Mustangs. Cut on next is Grayson Shambaugh. He reached first on error his first time up, so all of one to, all of one to, Hang score for Grayson Shamble. Josiah Twig got first. Grayson Shamble, the West Perry first baseman. Looks at a pitch up high and inside. It's a ball. One to no the count. To the Mustang first baseman. Side trick having a good game so far. First multi-hit game of the season for him with two hits. Next pitch, swung on and missed by Shambaugh. Count now one ball and one strike. Not bad hack there by Grayson Shambaugh. He just turned 17 in the Perry County semifinal tournament. Tournament semifinal against us on his 17th birthday, a little over a week ago. And this pitch, a nice curveball there. It's in there for a strike. One ball and one, or two balls, or excuse me, nah, two strikes and one ball to Grayson Shamble. Big pitch here coming to Grayson Shambo. There's the next pitch. Ryan's going to second, but it doesn't matter. It's a called third strike, and the inning is over. Josiah Twig picks up a two out single, but nothing coming after that. Greencastle Antrim still up three ball, three to two after three innings. You're watching West Prairie baseball against Greencastle Antrim. Exclusively on the West Prey Athletic Forest YouTube page. We'll be right back for a fourth end.
We are back here for the fourth inning. Greencastle Lantrum scoring three runs in the first. They could have gotten more in the third inning, but they strand the bases loaded. And here we go. And Russell still on the mound for the Mustangs. And the batter here for Greencastle Lantrum is Brady Diller. He is 0 for 1. He struck out looking his first time up to lead off the second inning. And he springs at the first pitch. It's 0 and 1 to count. And here's the pitch swung on. That's going to stay in play. This is going to be a, a play. It's going to be caught here by the Mustangs left fielder Noah Kittner. And there is one away here to start the fourth inning. Here is the nine hole hitter, Austin Wyatt, the Blue Devils second baseman. Ground out to shortstop his first time up in the second. So 0 1 for him, and he looks at a first pitch strike. 0 1 to count. And Russell doing fairly well right, against the bottom up in the lineup. Having a tough time against the middle, against the green up hitters. Uh, able to do very well. And the next pitch is up high for a ball. One ball, and one strike. And Russell had a one, two, three inning in the second inning against Stewart, Bryant, and Krasinski, which is the exact same first three for the Blue Devils here in the fourth. And that next pitch is fouled away. And the count's now one ball and two strikes. Big pitch here. Here's Wyand, and he grounds it to shortstop once again. He's got to have cross play, but not in time. And Wyand reaches first on an infield single. Now we are going back to the top of the lineup for the Blue Devils. Almost a big play there by Trent Herrera at the West Prairie shortstop, but that throw wasn't nearly in time. Here we go, top of the lineup once again for the Blue Devils. Here's Aiden Grinsinski, 0 for 1 so far. He was hit by a pitch and came around to score in the first inning. Then he struck out swinging in the second inning. And first, a quick throw over to Austin Wyan, trying to pick him off at first. One out, runner on first. First pitch to Grinsinski is swung on and missed. And it's all one to count. This has really been a very historic day for the West Prairie Mustangs. It was historic before the game even started. When they took this field for the first time, they took the field for the first time as a mid pen Colonial Division opponent against a team in the same division. For the last several years, they were in the mid pen capital division. But due to COVID 19 restrictions, uh, precautions by the mid pen conference, every team for every school will be in the same division. For West Perry, uh, every sports team they have will be in the mid pen colonial division. That includes all the fall teams, all the, all the winter teams, and all the spring teams. And spring teams are more thankful to be back in action after having their season canceled. West Prairie baseball, softball, and track and field their entire season canceled last year because of the COVID-19 shutdown. Count is one ball and two strikes to Aiden Grinsinski. West Prairie Mustangs, they have made to the PIAA District 3 Championship Tournament for 10 straight years heading into this one. Runners off the second, throw over to the side, twig, and it's not gonna be in time. Austin Wyan steals second. That last pitch was a ball. So two balls and two strikes to count here to Grinsinski. 
And next pitch is inside for a ball. The count is now four. Three balls and two strikes to Aiden Krasinski. A full count pitch to Aiden Krasinski. But first, a throw over back to second and Austin Wyand is able to get back to second in time. A very nice pickoff attempt there by Aiden Russell. Runner in scoring position, but one out here in the fourth inning. The full count pitch coming from Aiden Russell. Swung on as fouled off. And count is still full at three balls and two strikes to Aiden Gritsinski. Once again, a full count pitch coming from Aiden Russell to Aiden Gritsinski. But once again, a, a fake pickoff attempt there by Russell. No throw over to second. We're going to see another throw over here to second. Nope, it's a full count pitch. And it swung on. It's got to get hit towards the outfield. And Kittner has got to have it there at left center. Throw it back in quickly. The runner will stay put at second. And that is a big out number two. A big fly out here. Austin Wyan still put at second base. Now with two outs, here's the Greencastle Antrim catcher, Carter Reed. 0 for 1 so far. He walked his first time up, came around to score in the first, then ground out to second in the third inning. First pitch to Reed. He's down low in the third for a ball. 1-0. Next pitch is inside for a ball. 2-0 the to count to the Blue Devils catcher. Runner on second with two outs. Greencastle Antrim still with a 3-2 lead here in the top of the fourth. Next pitch is popped high in the air. That's going to stay in play. This is going to be catchable for Johnny Clay. And Johnny Clay grabs it in the outfield. And that is the third out. A big play there by Johnny Clay. P4, the put out. And that is the end of the top of the four. Greencastle Antrim still held to a 3-2 lead. West Prairie looking to tie it up in the bottom of the fourth. You're watching West Prairie baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Parts YouTube page. We'll be right back for the start of the fourth, bottom of the fourth inning.
We are back here for the fourth ball of the fourth inning. Green Castle Antrim still up three to two. And we got eight, nine, and one. Here's for the West Point Mustangs here in the bottom of the fourth. And here's Noah Kittner, who had two nice grabs out of the left field in the top of the fourth inning. He looks at a first pitch strike. Still out there on the mound for Greencastle Antrim. Andrew Kearns, he has five strikeouts so far. Bunt gets down here. This is going to be a tough play. Noah Kittner goes to first. And the ball gets away. And it's a bunt single for Noah Kittner. A very nice play. Good call there by that's great head coach Jeff Stano and Kittner. A bunt single. It's the first leadoff base hit for the Mustangs. First leadoff hit of the game for Ibert team. And here's the number nine hitter, Johnny Clegg, the second baseman for Wes Perry. And now we're, we have a timeout called here. And, and no, oh, we got a change here. Apparently there was a cat a runner's interference called here. I, I believe they're saying that Charlie Clegg stepped out of runner's lane. And if that's the case, that is a first out. That's a big call by the basis umpire, Frank Kutry. And West Prairie head coach Jeff Sano is not happy about this call either. Once again, two big calls here by Frank Kutry. They all started in the first inning. When Kutri caught Trent Herrera out, trying to steal second base. But now we got another one. Looked like Noah Kinder had a bunt single all the way, but they're calling runners interference. And Jeff Sam wants an explanation for this. call here by the umpires and West Prairie head coach Chip Sandal. The call still stands, so runner's interference is called. That's a big call there by the basis umpire Frank Kutry. So if there are one out here, no laid off hitter, no laid off hitter yet for the Mustangs in this game so far. And here's Johnny Clegg, the second baseman for West Perry. And he looks at a pitch up high for a ball. One and oh, the count to the Mustang second baseman, the number nine hole hitter. He's got nobody on with one out. Next pitch is in there for a strike. One ball and one strike to Johnny Clegg. Johnny Clegg reached first on a base on balls in the second inning. On a full count pitch. It was the first of three straight walks surrendered by Andrew Kearns in the second inning. And this pitch is down low. Two balls and one strike. Two balls and one strike. Two one pitch to Clegg. It swung on and this guy get fouled away. And the count is now even at two balls and two strikes. A really big call at first base to lead off the ball of the fourth. West Perry still down three balls and three to two in the score. And this pitch is down low. So once again, a full count to Johnny Clegg. Second time in this game to the West Perry nine hole hitter. That is ball four. So Johnny Clay once again reaches first on a walk. And could we be seeing another big inning here for the Mustangs? They scored two, they scored two runs on three straight walks.
two of them were with the bases loaded. And here is Trenton Herrera. Well, no official at bat so far. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning and then had a bases loaded walk in the second. That's pretty head coach Jeff Sow talking to Herrera. Discussing what they want to do here with Tommy Clay got first with one out. So Trent Herrera, no official at bat, hit by pitch at a basis load of walk. His third plate of play the parents here. Showing signs of bunt. There goes Clay. Clay going for second, and he is tagged out at second. That's the second time that West Perry runner has been caught stealing second. Not, that was a big thrill by West Greencastle Antrims catcher Carter Reed. He has been very good behind the home plate. Next pitch is in there for a strike. That first pitch was also a strike, so two strikes is the count. Here's the two-strike pitch from Kearns, grounded to shortstop, throw over to first, and he has to dive. And there's and it, and Kutri, Frank Kutri, the base umpire, saying that Herrera is safe at first. That was a tough play to Greencastle Central first baseman Darren Klein had to dive for that one. Kept I guess he kept his foot off the back, so it's an infield single for Trent Herrera, his first hit of the game. And here is Nelson Seabold. He is off, no official at bat for him either. He has two walks, one of them with the bases low in the second inning. And he looks at first pitch ball, only one and out the count to Nelson Seabold, the West Prairie third baseman. Runner on first with two outs here for the Mustangs. The 1-0 pitch coming from Andrew Kearns is in there for a strike. West Perry had their opportunities throughout this game to score a run. They scored two on bases loaded walks. Next pitch is up high for the ball. Two balls and one strike to Nelson Seabold. He's got a runner first with two outs. West play still down by one run here in the bottom of the fourth inning. A 2 1 pitch in the dirt. Three balls and a strike. Good. Nelson Seabold get on first on a walk for the third time in this game. He's walked twice already. The three and one pitch down low in the dirt. Ball four. Nelson Sipo reaches first on a walk for the third time in this game. And our runners at first and second now with two outs. Coming up next is the center fielder, Tanner Baker, for the Mustangs. Runner in scoring position, runner in first and second with two outs. Big at back coming here. Baker 0 for 2 so far. He ground out to the pitcher the first time up, then struck out looking in the second inning. First pitch Baker sees here in the fourth is a ball, 1 0 the count. Big at bat here. A base hit could tie this game up at 3. Next pitch Baker sees is in for a strike. One ball, one strike to count. Green Castle Antrim, usually a high scoring team throughout the season so far, only has three runs and are only up by one. Next pitch to Baker is in there for a strike. One ball and two strikes to count. Runners on first and second, two outs. Tanner Baker out the play. One two pitch card from Andrew Kearns. 
This next pitch and swung on and it's popped up. That's going to stay in play and unable to grab it is the catcher, Carter Reed. So a new life coming here for Tanner Baker. Count is still one ball and two strikes. A big break there. That ball might have tipped the edge of the cage. The backstop cage here at West Prairiefield. But uh, new life here for Tanner Baker. Count is still one ball and two strikes. One, two, pitch once again. Swung on and missed. And that is the third out. The side is retired in the fourth inning. West Price strands two more runners. And West Price still down three to two. You're watching West Prairie Baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Parts YouTube page. We'll be right back for the start of the fifth inning. We are back here for the top of the fifth inning. Greencastle Antrim still up three to two. And Aaron Russell is still out there on the mound for the Mustangs. And the first pitch to Logan Layton, the shortstop for Greencastle, is in the dirt for a ball, one and out. Greencastle Antrim had opportunities to score. They stranded the bases loaded in the third inning but they scored all three runs in the first inning. And they've been how scored us ever since. Logan Layton, right now at the plate for the Blue Devils, looks at a strike, counts down one ball, one strike. He started the scoring with a two-run double in the first inning to give the Blue Devils a two-nothing lead. And later scored on a sacrifice fly by Caden Smith to make it three to nothing. Here's a two one pitch coming from Aiden Russell, and that's in the dirt for a ball. Three balls and one strike. Logan Layton, one for two so far, two run double in the first, and struck out swinging in the third inning. And he leads off here in the top of the fifth. Next pitch is swung on and it's fouled back. And the count is going to be full. Three balls and two strikes. For the second time in this game, the last time Lockman Lane got the count full, he struck out swinging. And, and Russell do it again. This pitch is hit hard. It's going to get towards the left fielder, or right fielder, excuse me. And that is going to be caught by Bryce Smith. And that is the first down. That's how the top of the fifth gets started. Yeah. 
Coming up next for the Blue Devils is the first baseman, Darren Klein. One for one so far. He had a single in the first inning and then later hit by a pitch in the third on a three and one count. First pitch he sees is a ball, one and out. One thing that Aiden Russell has struggled with today, ladies and gentlemen, is first pitch strikes. He has not, not had many here in this game. And next pitch was swung high, hit the Josiah Trist, Twix mask. And count even now, one ball, one strike. We want to thank everyone at home for joining us here on the West Prairie Athletic Forest YouTube page. A big crowd here for West Prairie Baseball. A lot of support here for the West Prairie fans and a few other, a, a few fans from Green Castle making a long trip to support their Blue Devils. And next pitch is down low in the dirt. Two balls and one strike to counter Darren Klein, the Green Castle Antrim first baseman. Sun continuing to shine, 70 degrees here at West Prairie High School ballpark. Next pitch up high for a ball. Three balls and one strike to Darren Klein. This is the first of four straight home games for the West Perry Mustangs. And check swing, but the home play umpire Dennis Weller says he went around, so the count is now full at three balls and two strikes. That could have been ball four. That looked a little bit high from up here. But full count pitch, here it is. Swung on and grounded to shortstop. A big play here to first. Grayson Shambaugh has it, and that's the second out of the inning. Six free to put out, and there are two away here in the fifth inning for the Blue Devils. Here is Caden Smith now. He is one for one so far. He hit a sacrifice fly in the first inning and followed that up with a two-out single in the third inning. First pitch to Smith, a power for a ball, 1-0. Once again, a pitch that was not a strike, a first pitch strike from Aiden Russell. He has been struggling with that this entire game. First pitch, first pitch strikes, very important. Here's a 1-0 pitch, a strike high in the air, and that is going to go out of play. Count even at one ball, one strike to Caden Smith, the Blue Devils left fielder. For those who are just joining us, we are in the top of the fifth inning. Green Castle Antrim with a 3-2 lead. Next pitch to Ken Smith is in there for a called second strike. One ball and two strikes now. West Prairie has not had a 1 2 3 inning since the second inning. Can it get a 1 2 3 inning right here? And it's a call, third strike, and that is the second 1 2 3 inning for Aiden Russell and the Mustangs. 1 2 3, go to Blue Devils. And the Green Castle Antrim still has a 3 2 lead. We're hanging to the bottom of the fifth. You are watching West Prairie Baseball against Green Castle Antrim exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Park's YouTube page.
We are back here for the bottom of the fifth inning. West Perry still down three to two. They scored their two runs in the second inning on back to back bases loaded walks. But West Perry has been strong on the defense so far despite a tough first inning. They have been solid ever since with four scoreless innings against the Blue Devils. Coming up next is the pitcher Aiden Russell who most likely is going to go over to third base after this inning because right now we got Nelson Seabold warming up in the bullpen right in front of us here. First pitch, Aiden Russell is a ball, one know the count. Andrew Kern still pitching for the Blue Devils and the next pitch to Russell is a strike, one and one the count. And Russell 0 for 2 so far, a ground out to second, then a fly out to second. The next pitch he sees is a ball, two balls, and one strike to count. And yeah, no, Kern's having a good game so far against the Mustangs, despite uh, three straight blocks to give up two runs on bases loaded. And this is a sw swung on by Russell, ground there by Kearns, and that is the first out of the bottom of the third. One free put out. And come up next is Bryce Smith. He has struck out twice, both times looking in the second and third inning. To see if Bryce Smith can put, put the ball in play here for the first time. First pitch to Bryce Smith, up and right up on the corner. And that's called for a first pitch strike. Nobody on, one out, West Perry down three to two in the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss by Bryce Smith. And he is in danger of a hat trick here. Two strikes the count to the Mustangs right fielder. The next pitch, swing and a miss. And that is the third strikeout of the game for Bryce Smith. And there are two away now for the Mustangs. Up next is the West Perry catcher, Josiah Twig. He is two for two so far. He has two singles. He, the Blue Devils have not got him out yet. He came around to score the first time in the second inning, but then hold up at, set, at first base in the third inning. First pitch for Josiah Twig is a ball. One and know the count. Nelson Seabolt warming up in the West Perry bullpen. And next pitch to Twig is in her first strike. One and one the count. Green Castle Antrim has not had a one, two, three inning yet in this game. They have a good chance for one right here. Here's a swing, and it's going to go out of play. The count is now one ball and two strikes. One and two the count to the West Perry catcher. The one and two pitch from Andrew Kearns is down low in the dirt. The count is now even at two balls and two strikes. Next pitch, a swing and a miss. Josiah Twig tried to check that, but it would not go around. That's the first time that Josiah Twig has been put out and it's a first one two three inning for the blue devils one two three go down the mustangs we are still at three two greencastle rancho half the lead after five innings greencastle rancho three west perry two we are hanging to the sixth inning for the first time here at home this season you're watching west perry baseball against the Green Castle Antrim Blue Devils exclusively on the West Pat Flag Parents YouTube page. We'll be right back.
for the start of the sixth inning. We are back here for the sixth inning. We have a new pitcher here for the West Prairie Mustangs. Nelson Seabone has got to go from third base to the pitching mound. And Aiden Russell, or excuse me, number 11, Tanner Baker, or no, I'm right, yeah, Aiden Russell will be going over to third base. Aiden Russell, not a bad outing for him. Five innings pitched. Four strikeouts, only gave up one walk, and gave up four hits and three earned runs. And he has been solid ever since then, but I guess the pitch count was high. And so, Nelson Sipo will take the mound here for the Mustangs. And he's got seven, excuse me, six, seven, eight hitters coming up for the top of the sixth inning. Ray Castro Antrim scored all three runs in the first inning. The one, two, three inners came around to score. Two of them on the two run double by Logan Layton, and Layton scored on a sacrifice fly. So here is Connor Rom, the third baseman for Green Castle Antrim. He is no official at bat so far. He has been hit twice. He's been hit by pitch twice in this game so far. And the first pitch he sees is a strike. Wop has been very good in getting a hit in the count, but he's been hit by a pitch twice by Aiden Russell. The next pitch is down low for a ball, one ball, one strike to count. Nelson Seabold looking to get back in rhythm here. He came on Tuesday, he came into the bottom of the seventh with a three to one lead against the Waynesboro Indians, but he gave up three runs in the bottom of seventh to give Waynesboro the three to one victory this past Tuesday. That last pitch was in the dirt for a ball. Two balls and one strikes to Connor Rom. Next pitch, just outside. Three balls and one strike to count. Once again, here's Connor Rom going ahead in the count. He went up two to one in the first inning, then three to one in the third. And once again, 3-1 here in the sixth. 3-1 pitch from Seabold. It's ball four. And Connor Rom reaches base for a third time, this time on a walk. And that's a leadoff walk for the Blue Devils. Come up next is the Green Castle Antrim pitcher, Andrew Kearns. 0 for 2 so far, he reached first on a fielder's choice in the first and then ground out to Aaron Russell in the third inning. 
the first first pitch before the first pitch to Kearns on Furl with the first Grayson Shambo. And Rom is able to get back there easily. Sixth inning. Green counts to Andrew with a three to two lead. The first pitch to Andrew Kearns is in there for a strike. First pitch strike once again. Very important here. That's the first one for Andrew C for Nelson Seabold, excuse me. Ball one pitch. Kern showing signs of fun. And no throw, throw over to first. That pitch was a ball. It's 1-1 one, one the count. No throw over to first. Connor Rom able to get back in. He looked like he was almost halfway to his second base, but he was able to get back in time. No throw over by Josiah Twig, the West Prairie catcher. Here comes the 1-1 one, one pitch from Seabold. The first, another throw over here to Rom. I'm able to get back in there in time. Sun starting to set down here in Western Perry County. A beautiful day for baseball. A little over a week ago, the Boca Weather team predicted some stray showers in the afternoon. Here's the throw over from Josiah Twig. And that last pitch was a strike. So it counts now one ball and two strikes to Andrew Kearns. Runner on first with nobody out. Next pitch up high. A good luck there for Josiah Craig looking over at first. Count is even at two balls and two strikes. Beautiful weather here. A couple of crowds a little over a week ago, the local weather team from ABC 27 predicted some stray showers, but Mother Nature decided to hold off on those showers until overnight tonight. So, got a nice break here from Mother Nature. It's just a beautiful day of baseball. Two two pitch swung on and it's gonna get out of play. Count is still two balls and two strikes. That base on ball is now blocked by Connor Rum. That's the first. That's only the second time that Green Castle Antrim has got their leadoff hitter on. The first time they did that was in the first inning. Next pitch is outside for a ball. Three balls and two strikes. Full count here to Andrew Kearns, the Greencastle Antrim pitcher. Runner on first with nobody out. The full count pitch from Seabold. Swing, swing and fouled out of play. Still three balls and two strikes. Once again, the full count pitch coming from Sebo, taking his time in this one. But it's got to be a run, a throw over once again to first base. That's one thing that West Perry has been keeping a cross sign on all day some runners stealing bases. So far, Greencastle Interim hasn't stolen any bases. And there is a swing, and that's going to get down for a base hit. Right down the line at third. Gets out in the outfield, and that is a single for Andrew Kearns. Here's his first hit of the game. Connor Rahm advances to second, and there are now runners at first and second with nobody out. Some early trouble here 
for Nelson Seafold. His first two batters, he gave up a walk and now a base hit. And come up next is Brady Dillard, the right fielder for the Blue Devils. He is 0 for 2 so far. He struck out looking his first time in the second and then flat out to left field in the fourth inning. Mariners on first and second with nobody out. Let Green Castle Antrim looking to increase their 32 lead. Here in the top of the sixth inning. And once again, a step off here for Sebo. Yeah, so far in this game, Green Castle Antrim, the Blue Dallas have not had a stolen base. Probably because West Perry is expecting it. And now another throw over back to second. And Ron is able to get back in there. We have reached the two hour mark here at West Perry High School. This game started at 4 30. It's now 6 32 Eastern Time. The next pitch, so it's time to find his dealer. And he takes a ball, I believe. Or no, they're saying that was a strike. So, oh, won the count now to the Blue Devils left, right fielder. 0 for 2 so far, struck out looking and a fly out. One pitch once again showing signs of biting his door, but this time the ball is it's is inside. It's a ball, one ball and one strike. Nelson you know, Seaball only his second appearance on the mound so far this season. He's in trouble here. Glares on first and second with nobody out. And once again, another step off here. No throw over to second. One on one pitch coming from Seaball. Or is he going to throw over to second once again? Yes, he is. Trent Herrera has been. Garden second base for his life so far. That's three straight throwovers or step offs here for Nelson Seabow. Let's see if they actually pitch to Brady Dower here with a one and one count. I think we're about to see another throw over. Trent Herrera is guarding second once again. And now another throw over. Here's the punt. It goes up and a dive by Josiah Twig. And he's unable to get it, but it's a foul ball. The count is one ball and two strikes. That was almost a huge play by Josiah Twig. Diving for the ball, looking for a huge first down. But it goes down out of, down the foul. So one ball and two strikes to count. The sun now disappearing in Western Perry County behind some clouds. And another throw over here to second. Trent Herrera trying to get Connor Rom at second. But the, so far, that has not worked for the Mustangs. It's probably another reason why Greencastle Antrim has not had a stolen base in this entire game. And they have been keeping a very close eye on base runners in this game. There's a swing. It's got to go. stay in play. And right there is Noah Kittner for a huge second down. Throw over cutoff. Here 
by this West Perry shortstop Herrera. And that is a big first out. That's the second time that Brady Dower has fl flied out to left field. And right here is a number nine hitter for Green Castle Antrim, Austin Lyon. He is one for two so far. He ground out to shortstop in the second inning, and then he later reached first on infield single. He also has a stolen base. So I just remembered that Austin Lyon did have a stolen base in the fourth inning. Uh, Lyon swings at the first pitch. All in one the count. One out, runners on first and second. All one pitch from Seabold. It hits Lyon. And now trouble here. The bases are loaded with one out. Big trouble here, and here comes head coach Jeff Stano to the mound. And we might be getting a switch here on the mound. Only one out here. Bases are loaded. This is the second time that Greencastle Andrum has had the bases loaded. The first time was back in the third inning when they had a three, a three to two lead, trying to increase their lead. But no runners scored in the third inning. See if Greencastle Antrim can increase their three to two lead. Well, I thank everyone at home for joining us here on the West Prairie Athletic Park's YouTube page. The sun is starting to set down here at West Prairie. This game has lasted for two hours and eight minutes so far. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Mount visit is over by Jeff Sano. Talking to his entire infield, looking for a ground ball, looking for a big double play. The infield is in here for the Mustangs. A base hit could give the Blue Devils a free run lead for the second time. Up by one here. And here is the top of the lineup here for the Blue Devils. Aiden Grinsinski, he was hit 0 for 2 so far. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning and came around to score. And that ball was in the dirt. And one out the count. There's a swing, and that is a fair ball. Fair, fair ball called by home plate umpire Dennis Weller. Two runs are going to come across the score. And it's a two run basis loaded double for Aiden Grinsinski. And with that, Green Castle Antrim increases their. Or, no, wait a minute. Oh, they're saying it was a, a foul ball. Oh, you can't get any closer than that. The home plate umpire, Dennis Bauer, he did call a fair ball, but now in the last second, it's a foul ball. So that's a big strike. One and one, a huge break for the Mustangs. So the count is now one and one. The score is still three to two for the Blue Devils. Bases are still loaded. One and one the count. A fair ball turned into a foul ball. <laughs> and there is strike two. Let's see if this big call by home plate umpire Dennis Weller. Man, I ain't never seen a home plate umpire change his call like that. He called it a fair ball, ladies and gentlemen. But now you say, now you say it was a foul ball. I've never seen that. And there's a call third strike. So that is a huge break for the Mustangs. They're now two away now. And the bases are still loaded. 
Can West Perry find a way to get out the bases loss situation for the second time in this game? Here is the Greencastle Antrim catcher, Carter Reed. 0 for 2 so far. He walked his first time up and then ground out to second base and then flied out to second. Here's a first pitch ball to Carter Reed. If West Perry can get out of this, I'll tip my hat to the entire West Perry team. This is a big break, a big call by Dennis Weller, the home plate umpire. And here's a swing and a, and that goes out to center field. A big, almost a big catch by Seaball and a throw over to home and the runner's out. One run does come in the score. That's a huge throw by the center fielder, Tanner Baker. One run comes in to score, but the second one to no avail. And uh, now Greencastle Andrew head coach Eric Shainer is not happy about this call. One run did come in to score, but the second one not so much. A huge throw by Tanner Baker to home plate. So we have reached the bottom of the sixth inning. Greencastle strikes for one on a base slow situation. But that is it. Greencastle Antrim leads four to two. West Prairie need to get some hits here. You're watching West Prairie Baseball against Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils exclusively on a West Prairie Lake Barnes YouTube page. We'll be right back. We are back here for the bottom of the sixth inning. Greencastle Antrim now up four to two. It could have been a whole lot worse, but a big throw from the West Perry center fielder, Tanner Baker, long throws a missile right to home plate to get the, fan, the runner from second who was trying to score home on that basis loaded single. Caught around, did turn around to score, but Andrew Kearns caught at home plate to end the inning off a great throw by Tanner Baker. And the score is now four to two. Andrew Kern still pitching for the Blue Devils. And here's the first pitch swinging. It's grounded to second. And Grayson Shampaugh, the leadoff hitter, is down on one pitch. That is the first out of the third inning, or sixth inning, excuse me. Up next is Noah Kittner, the left fielder for West Barrett. He was 0 for 2 so far. He struck out swing his first time, but then on the first, on the, on the second by the parents, he was called out on runner's interference on a big call by basis umpire Frank Kutry, which looked like an infield bunt single, but it was called out at first on runner's interference. Count is now one ball and one strike to Kittner. 
and I had a couple fly balls so far in this game. Had a nice day in the outfield. Here's the swing, and it's going to get out of play. One ball and two strikes. We're going to have a number pitcher warming up here for the Mustangs. We'll give you word on who it is in just a few seconds. The one two pitch, however, is swung on. It's got to get grounded to shortstop, and that is not going to be in time. The Greencastle Antrim shortstop. Logan Layton did not get the throw off. So it's an infield single for Noah Kittner. And there's one on with one out. Grayson Shambaugh now warming up in the bullpen for the Mustangs. He'll be looking to come in in the seventh inning. Looking to keep the four, run, four runs that Greencastle has. They have a four to two lead. Can West Prairie strike for one or two runs here in this one? In the sixth inning, here is Johnny Clegg, and he looks at our first pitch ball. One and all the count. History in the making, ladies and gentlemen. West Prairie's first home game in the mid pen Colonial Division. First time that they faced the Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils since 2016 in the semifinals of the Big Pen Conference Tournament. Next pitch was a strike to Johnny Clegg. Johnny Clegg, no official up out, he has walked twice. He was caught stealing in the fourth inning. Very quickly, a throw over here. Noah Kidner able to get back in time. Actually, now if I see, we actually have a new pitcher here for Greencastle Antrim. Andrew Kearns, done after five innings. And the new pitcher is Carter Reed, the catcher, who was the catcher for Greencastle, now pitching for the Blue Devils. And there's a swing and a miss. Johnny Clegg sit down on strikes. And there are two away now here in the sixth inning. The catcher now for Greencastle Antrim. Can't see from up here who it is. I do apologize for that. We'll figure that out as we go along. Back to the top of the lineup for the Mustangs. Here's Trenton Herrera. And he looks at first pitch strike. Hold on one the count. Runner on first with two outs. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Next pitch from Reed in the dirt for a ball. One and one to count. Nice stop there by the catcher behind home plate. Greencastle Antrim, for those just joining us, has a four to two lead in the bottom of the sixth inning. And there is called strike two to the number to the Leadoff hitter Trent Herrera. He's got a runner on first with two outs. He has a one and two count now. From Carter Reed. There comes the one and two pitch, and instead it's a step off, and right there is Noah Kentner able to slide back to first. Now so Kittner going for second, for all the first, and not in time, Noah Kittner steals second. That's the first stolen base of the game for the Mustangs. And now they got a runner in scoring position with two outs. A base hit could make this a one-run game. And Trent Herrera get with a two-ball, two-strike count. Here's a swing that's popped up. This is going to stay in play and it's, go it's caught by the first baseman. And that is the third out of the game. Pop out in foul territory. And we are hanging into the seventh and final inning in regulation. Grayson Shambaugh will be coming up to the mound. You're watching West Prairie 
Baseball against Greencastle Antrim exclusively on the West Prayer Flag Barnes YouTube page. We'll be right back for the start of the seventh inning. We are back here for the seventh inning. Ringcastle Antrim up four to two against the Mustangs. Nelson Seabold is still on the mound for the Mustangs. His second inning of work. He gave up one run in the sixth inning, but it could have been much worse as it was a basis lower situation, but a missile by Tanner Baker from center field got Andrew Kearns at home plate for a third and final out. So here we go, three, four, and five headers for the Blue Devils. Here is Logan Layton, the shortstop. And he swings at the first pitch, and that is going to go foul. Oh, and one in the count. Logan Layton, one for three so far. He had a big first at-bat in the first inning on a one and one count, a two-run double to get... Greencastle Antrim on the board. Ever since then, he has struck out and flied out in the third and fifth inning. There's the 0 1 pitch in there for a called strike. 0 and 2 of the count now to the Blue Devil shortstop. We saw Grayson Shampo warm up in the bullpen before this inning. And next pitch is a waste pitch in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. And Nelson Seaball to Logan Layton to lead off the seventh inning. One thing about Wes Perry is not all familiar with is hitting in the bottom of the seventh. It does happen every now and then. And there's a curveball and a call third strike. Second time that Layton has gone down on strikes. And that is the first out of the seventh inning. A big strikeout for Nelson Siebel. Six strikeouts thrown by the West Prairie pitching today. That was Seabold's second. And here is a first strike to the Greencastle Antrim first baseman, Darren Klein, number 28. He is one for two so far. He had base hit in the first, hit by pitch in the third, and ground out to shortstop in the fifth. Next pitch is also a ball. Or no, excuse me, that's a strike. So 0 and 2 the count. 0 and 2 count. Here's the ball. 1 and 2 the count. 
Ken Westbrook, Ken Nelson Seabolt get back to back strikeouts in the seventh inning. One two pitch here from Seabolt. Swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts to start this seventh inning. And there are two away now for Caden Smith. One for two so far. He hit a sacrifice fly in the first. Had a base hit in the third. A struck out looking his last time up in the fifth inning. First pitch to Smith. Swing. It's hit hard. This is going to be a tough play for the left fielder. And he's got it. A nice diving grab by Noah Kittner. A 1-2-3 inning for the Mustangs. And we are going to the bottom of the seventh. Greencastle Antrim with a 4-2 lead. They are three outs away from getting a big win here at West Perry. West Perry needing to score two runs to tie this game up. We're hanging to the ball in the seventh with Greencastle Antrim with a two-run lead. We're watching West Perry baseball against the Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils exclusively on the West Perry Athletic Park's YouTube page. We'll be right back for the bottom of the seventh. We are back here for the bottom of the seventh inning. Last chance here for the Mustangs. They are down by two. West Prairie in good shape here. Two, three, and four hitters for the Mustangs. Here is Nelson Sipo, the new, now the pitcher for the Mustangs. And he looks a uh, first pitch strike from Carter Reed, who's still pitching for the Blue Dallas now in his second inning of work. Here's a swing and a miss by Seaball. All in two of the count now. West Perry in danger of going all in two in the mid pen Colonial Division. They are still looking for their first win in that division. And here's a waste pitch down low for a ball. One ball and two strikes to Nelson Seaball. Next pitch is swung on and fouled away just barely. And that's a good foul there for Nelson Seabolt. And the count is still at one ball and two strikes. The one two pitch swung on. That's got to get down for a base hit. It's a leadoff single for Nelson Sipo, and that is huge for the Mustangs. And it's a leadoff single. That is exactly what the West Perry Mustangs needed. And here is Tanner Baker, who was a big hero in the sixth inning with a missile from center field to home plate on the bases loaded to prevent a second run. First pitch that Baker sees is in there for a strike, only one. Tying run is at the plate. West Prairie down by two. Nelson Seabolt at first base. A swing and foul back. 0-2 oh, the count now to Tanner Baker. Oh, 
one two pitch in there for a call third strike that could have been inside as Baker stepped back but it's a call for a strike and that's the first out of the inning here's Aiden Russell now the third baseman for the Mustangs he's got Nelson Seabold at first with one out One thing that West Perry baseball is not used to, ladies and gentlemen, losing at home. They, they are a team that rarely ever loses here at home. The first pitch that Aiden Russell sees is down low in the dirt for a ball. One and all the count. They are in danger of losing their first home game of the year. Only the second time at home this season for the Mustangs. Next pitch to Russell is in the dirt. Two and all the count. A good, a good strategy here for the Mustangs. Not swinging until they get a strike. That's how Coach Sano works. And when you're down the ball in the sound, you do not swing until you get a strike. In that case, it's right there. So two and one now the count to Aiden Russell. Sun starting to set down here. And there's a swing and foul back. Kept from 2 0. It's now 2 and 2. One out, runner on first at the bottom of the seventh. West Perry needing two runs to tie this game up. Next 2 2 pitch, line drive. It's not going to be caught. Yes, it is. It's the line drive to the center fielder, Aiden Grinsinski. Nelson Seaball back up first. And that is a huge second out. West Perry down to their final out. And here is Bryce Smith, who has struck out three times in this game. Can Bryce Smith find a way to put this ball in play? He has struck out three times, twice looking. Last time out, he struck out swinging. And the first pitch to Bryce Smith is down low for a ball, 1 0. Oh, 1 0 pitch, down low, 2 0. Last chance here for the Mustangs. Two outs, runner on set, runner on first. There are two outs. Bryce Smith has struck out three times in this game. And they put the ball in play. There's a called strike. Two and one is the count. If you're Bryce Smith, you definitely do not want to go on Sombrero. That's four strikeouts in the game. He's already got the hat trick. Let's see if he can put the ball in play here. A swing and a miss. And West Perry is down to their final strike. Two two pitch from Reed. Down low in the dirt. It's full. Three balls and two strikes. Nelson Seaball at first will be taken off on this pitch. Full count, two outs. Here's the full count pitch. Called strike three. Bryce Smith cannot believe it. And that is the game, ladies and gentlemen. A tough break for the Mustangs. Bryce Smith striking out for the fourth time today. And that is the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Four to two is the score. And Wes Perry goes down for the second time in the Midpen Colonial Division. We'll be right back in 30 seconds for the post-game wrap-up here at West Prairie High School.
we are back here for the West Perry Bulls game wrap up here. Four to two to score. West Perry goes down for the second time in the Mid Ten Colonial Division. You can see on the bottom of your screen the West Perry team getting some last minute words from head coach Jeff Sano. A tough loss here. The second straight game by West Perry has had a tough loss, and they drop down to 0 and 2 in the Mid Ten Colonial Division. West Perry now 1 and 2 overall. 0 and 2 in the Mid Ten Colonial Division. The Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils stay unbeaten. They are 4 and 0 to start the year 3 and 0 against Mid Penn Colonial Defensions. The star of the game is Andrew Kearns, the starting pitcher for Greencastle Antrim. He has a, a good five innings of work, and he got it done on the plate as well. And also, a co-star player of the game is Logan Layton. He got the Blue Devils on the board first with a two-run double in the first inning. And a very tough loss here for the West Prairie Mustangs. And they will look to snap a two-game losing streak. That does not happen very often for the West Prairie Mustangs. And our next broadcast here on the West Prairie Athletic Park's YouTube page will be West Prairie Baseball's next game on Thursday as they will play host to the Big Spring Bulldogs in the mid Penn Colonial Division matchup, West Prairie will look for their first win in the division on Thursday. That game will start at 4.30. For Greencastle Antrim, they'll go, look to go 5-0 on the year. They'll return home on Thursday as they will take on the James Buchanan Rockets at 4.15. Our next broadcast again on Thursday, 4.30, West Prairie Baseball versus Big Springs. Your final line score in this one for West Prairie. Two runs on five hits and no errors. For Grand Castle Antrim, four runs on eight hits and one error. And the win goes to Andrew Kearns on the mound. The loss goes to Ann Russell, who had five innings pitched with four strikeouts, gave up three earned runs. He gets the loss for the Mustangs. So that's going to do for us here at West Prairie High School Baseball Varsity Field. Tough loss here for the Mustangs on behalf of our West Prairie Athletic Director Ryan Harrison, our West Prairie High School Principal Chris Ron, and all of us here at West Prairie High School. I am Alex Wall. Thank you for joining us here. Your final score on this one, West Perry 2, Greencastle Antrim 4. We'll see you on Thursday for West Prairie Baseball versus Big Spring. Good night, everybody.